And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Midge Marsden. Midge has played at thousands of venues for thousands of fans throughout New Zealand. A legend in the music business and New Zealand Entertainer of the Year in 1990. Midge is here tonight to tell us about his top billing with Shane at this weekend's End of the Summer Blues Festival in Blockhouse Bay. We welcome Midge Marsden as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Midge Marsden, welcome a legend, a music legend. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. You sir. are known the length and breadth of New Zealand. Wow. How does that make you feel? Wow. I guess um, it's gratifying to have a career that's lasted this long, you know, to oh, be fair. What a good name too, Midge Marsden. Yeah. Was I, it always I, Midge Marsden? No, oh. no it was not. I was born Keith. Keith? Yeah. No, Keith, that doesn't cut it. Does Keith it? Douglas, you see. <laughs> and uh, I, I met the guy who called me Midget. I would got called, when I was about five or six years old, I got called Midget. Yeah, yeah. Um, his name was Roger Slight. And, one, uh, day one day, Roger. One day, Roger. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to do. So I met him at the school reunion yeah. about three years ago, mm. and I reminded him in a speech. I, I played some songs, and I got up in front of the entire school, and I said, "I'd like to thank Roger Slight very much for giving me this name, yeah. without which I'd probably still be Keith Marsden, yeah, <laughs> living Keith in Marsden. somewhere obscure." Oh. So it just rolled with Marsden. I got called Midget, and they dropped the T, mm. and I became Midge, and it just stuck. Why? Why music, Midge? Why music? Um, yeah, it's one of those things where you could have been you, a biologist. You wake up one day and you start hearing things. I think that's what it, we had little crystal sets when I was a kid. You know, in sixty, we were, and apparently they make them again. You know, you can still buy a buy crystal, a crystal set. set. You can buy a crystal set. That's another story, but you yeah. can. So crystal sets were the thing, and then you had your own little personal headphones, and I used to listen to the local radio. And growing up in New Plymouth, which I did we could go up onto a high point on the coast and boom and beam into Australian radio stations because of the where Taranaki is. Mm. But when the rock and roll era you know came along all of a sudden there's this rough ready kind of music that wasn't pop yeah. music, wasn't the Mills Brothers, you know, I was thinking Who's Chuck Berry? Yeah. Wow, that's rough, but I love it. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden this whole new music. And of course, radio back in those days was very restrictive about very what it played. pompous, wasn't it? Very well, it was pompous. just, you just didn't hear a lot of things mm. on the radio which you could buy in the local record store. So you started out buying 45s and, and it just grew from there, really. And, just and this was lovely. New Plymouth, wasn't it? It was a New Plymouth, yeah. Taranaki yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. What was Taranaki. the date of the birth, uh, Midge? What, what year were you born? I was born in 45. Wow, hasn't it gone so fast? It has. Yeah. As, as I say to when I, when I teach my young students, uh, I say, of course, that's last century. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it is last century, yeah. yet it doesn't seem, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. Anyway. So what was the, uh, what do you think was the song that defined in, in your head that you wanted to, you wanted to get into music? What, what were you hearing that made, I've got to get into a band? I had a really good ear, Jared. I had a really, really good ear for music. But I didn't play anything. I used to hang around with bands in New Plymouth, yeah. my f mates. And I'd sit in the hall and watch them practice and play, but I never played. I never... And I never aspired to be a musician, I just loved what they were doing. But eventually I kind of just tagged along and mm. got a guitar and just still tagged along, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then I got invited, invited to join a band that Barry Gordon was running. Barry Gordon from Stratford phoned me up and said, I hear you've got a Fender Stratocaster. You see? That's, <laughs> and I did. I had some, my parents were horrified, horrified. I bought from Sedley Wells and Christchurch, who were the agents at that stage, there wasn't many shops in New Zealand with Fender Stratocasters. 1962, I bought a Fiesta Red, Hank Marvin, Fender oh, Strat. To, to die for. To die for. To die for. And 120 pounds a cost, mm. plus 15 pounds for the case mm. and postage. And those days, that was, that was a deposit on a house. Mm. It was. It absolutely was. And I was in big trouble. My, my, I did a paper round and I did a milk round. And that was like about two years savings. I spent it all on a Stratocaster. <laughs> and I had the first Fender Stratocaster outside of the South Island. I think First or second, I think, in the North Island. Bef well, Max Merritt and Ray Columbus had them soon, but they all lived in Christchurch. And they all got them from Sidley Wells, you see. Yeah. Sidley Wells long gone. So the word got around town that this guy called Midge Marsden's got a Fender Strat. I'm thinking, well, who's he? Does he play? And of course, I couldn't play anything. I could play one chord, <laughs> but I had a Fender Strat. Yeah, yeah. So Barry Gordon calls me. I said, I hear you've got a Fender Stratocaster. I said, well, I have actually, Barry. Oh, 
perhaps you'd like to um, get together with me and, we'll, and, and join my band. I said, but I can't play yet. It doesn't matter, you've got a Stratocaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course that went on to be Barry and the Breakaways. Barry and the Breakaways. Which yeah, have become Barry. famous as uh, collector's items. Yeah, we, we did really well in the 60s. We, uh, Johnny Cooper was a man who gave us our music start. The wonderful Johnny Cooper, the singing Mary Cowboy, recorded the first rock and roll song outside of America. A, a, a shonky version of Rock Around the Clock. He hated it, but the record company said, you've got to do this, this is the new big thing. He was in the country and western. Rock and roll is the new big thing. And he went, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock? I'm not singing this. <laughs> this is not one by one, we broke each heart. We do. You know, yeah, anyway, exactly. that's another long story. Crudy, but yeah. Johnny Cooper was running talent quests. He would go from area to area to area and run talent quests. So within like, one week I learnt more than three chords. With three or four chords that's all you kind of needed and for the music that we got yeah. involved in in the yeah. 60s, four or five chords is all you needed and that's what I did. Now we'll just take a, a little break here in the sense to tell our audience that you're on the show today because, uh, and Shane will be there as well, so you're both yeah. sharing the top bill. It's the end of the Summer Blues uh, uh, Free Musical music Festival. Festival in Blockhouse Bay at the primary school there. And it's going to be a big day this very Saturday. Okay. You're looking forward to it, Mitch? Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it because the other thing is it's the end, it's the last day of daylight saving. So it is the end of the summer. And of course it's free. So all our baby boomer uh, viewers, if you want to get out to the uh, Blockhouse Bay Primary, it's going to be a great afternoon. It starts at two in the afternoon. It starts at it? two in the afternoon. And then goes through to eight. It goes through eight o'clock. You've stuck to music right through, and uh, now yeah, a, lot I have. Guys, a lot of guys give up, don't they? They have that youthful, wonderful yeah, period, yeah. but you kept going. Why? I sort of kept going, really. Well, just harking back to the Johnny Cooper talent quest, we each week had a, we had a guest artist, Tommy Adley, Dinah Lee, who was huge at that mm. stage. And so through the contacts of those people, we got to Wellington, yeah. and Tommy Adley said, we were called, actually, we were called the Blue Diamonds before they said, no, 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 Blue Diamonds, no. Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, da da da, and the so and so's, Barry and the Breakaways. So yeah. Tommy Adderley gave us the name. And we made um, eight or nine singles. We made two albums, which are collector's items these days. And we toured New Zealand in a Leyland van, yeah. <laughs> as everyone did in the yeah. 60s. But yeah. by the end of it, uh, end of the 60s, uh, I got, I had to get national service. I went mm. to the army. And, and the 60s were starting to tail off. Mm. As we all know, you know, Sergeant Peppers was the turning point, I thought. And then, of course, Woodstock was sort of the, definitely the end of the 60s. Yes, and, it was. and like a lot of us, mm -hmm. we'd done our dash. And so uh, I moved into radio for seven or eight years in Wellington, stayed mm -hmm. in Wellington, worked for the NZBC. But from there, I, I left radio, went to Australia, um, toured around in a Holden station wagon this time, as opposed to a Leyland in Australia for three years with a guy called Phil Manning. Came back here, not quite sure what I was going to do. Ended up in Hamilton, ended up in Raglan, bought a little batch. Mm -hmm. And I was based in, in the Waikato for another 23 years. And then you started to build that wonderful reputation. It was the first time I'd worked under my own name, really, as Midge Marsden yeah. Band. And, then, and that continued. And I, once again, started from scratch, going round and round the country, building up an audience, building up an audience. Made one album and then made another one called 12 Bars from Mars. And then 1990 was my big year, I made an album called Burning Rain, uh, the, the song was Burning Rain was yeah. a, a monster hit and the album was platinum and so that was the peak really for me. But, but meanwhile from there onwards I started going overseas every year and playing in Europe and America, Europe and America, always tripping backwards and forwards. And What is it that you get, what's the, what's the payback, what's the buzz for you on stage uh, Midge when, when everything's cooking well? What are you feeling when you feel those people? really appreciate, appreciating what, who and what you are? Well I think a lot of, I can remember years and years of playing to 25 people and thinking why am I doing this, yeah. you know, but the 25 would turn into 35 yeah. and over the years, you know, the 35 would turn into 895, yeah. you know what I mean. Exactly. So you build up a reputation and people expect something from you and I've always had the thing where I'm not really, I don't consider myself a really, really top-notch true musician. I can sing in tune and I can play a bit of harmonica. But you're but doing something right, aren't you? Well, you don't build a reputation from nothing, yeah. do you? Someone had what to be you? the front yeah. person. Yeah. Someone yeah. had to be that man out front. And everything I watched when I was very, very young, I always looked at the person out the front thinking, that's not a bad job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I liked some of the things people said and I've always continued to this day, I watch people to see how they deliver stuff and how they 
communicate. I was good at having collecting great musicians around me who mm -hmm. were happy to let me be the front person yes. and do all the talking and do all the communicating. And I was very meticulous about the song set, set lists mm -hmm. and what was going where. And while I'm singing one song, I'm looking at the list, thinking about the next one. Yeah. And if the audience isn't quite kind of happening, oh no, I won't do that. I'll jump to this one, yeah. then I'll come back to that one. Yeah. Continually doing That's that. That's what I was saying. So you're always really conscious, done. Yeah. I've always done that in my career. Always done that. What's a compliment you felt that? We really had got through to an audience or uh, what really makes you think hey this makes it worthwhile I'll tell you what probably in the last 10 years I think I get emails from people and I get people coming at the end of a gig saying it's great that you're still playing live for yeah. God's sake don't stop. stop please don't stop there's not enough of you people left anymore yeah. and we'll always come and see you play and that's loyalty yes continually going back to the same towns like I always go to Invercargill when I'm there's certain towns and cities in this country where I've always had a good following, mm. and so I try to go back. But that's one of the things that I like the most, is people saying, don't quit. Yeah. You know, there's not many of you left yeah. from the 60s. And so, I, that, to me, that's gratitude, and that's also loyalty. People come back and see you again and again and again. You know? Now, for yeah. the one person in New Zealand that yes. hasn't uh, seen you, Midge, for that one person, what about, can we throw to something that, that this is on YouTube, this is you yep. doing, playing a bit of harmonica? Explain exactly what we're going to see. I was fortunate enough to be involved in two fantastic uh, TV commercials in the 80s, uh, written by the wonderful Murray Grinley, another baby boomer, yeah. with a great band called The Underdogs. He went on to be a really good jingle writer, and I got the call to come and audition for uh, a commercial written for Europa Oil, because Europa Oil was the last of the New Zealand oil companies. Yes. They were like little mini travelogues, and the song was called Travelin' Oil. Into the harp. How do I get into the harmonica? I, I think probably Woody Guthrie, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Sonny Terry was yeah. and Brownie McGee used to come here, but I knew, heard about them and a friend in New Plymouth was a folk music collector and he played me this harmonica thing. I said, wow, what's that? And then of course, you know, the Rolling Stones play a bit of harmonica, Brian Jones play a bit, yeah. and I started hearing it's this harmonica Beatles thing. Are, yeah. So I picked it up and started teaching myself because it wasn't really anyone to teach yeah. you. And, and over the you years... You didn't go to the local harmonica player. No. <laughs> so over the years, I kind of just kept at it and kept at it and kept at it. And um, 20 years or so later, I think, well, that's not too bad playing. You've ended up with a, uh, an award. Uh, Helen Clark gave you an award. Yes. Tell and, us and, about and, that. And, and, was, and uh, Elizabeth R. gave, yeah. she signed it too, so that was an OBE. an OBE. Yes. Well, wow. NZOM, New Zealand Order of Merit, but in the old hey, school. Most old of ways. us don't get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> in the old way, it was an, uh, the old school, it was an OBE. OBE yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then the Waikato University. What yes. They, they kindly gave me an, an MA, an honorary Master Arts. So um, I was all like. This from music. All this from music. All this from service services to music it was. I think we could probably do three hours here but uh, <laughs> we've got 15 minutes. Midge, uh, once again let's go over, it's the end of the Summer Blues Festival. It is. Uh, it's free, free it's music festival. It's a free festival. music festival. Blockhouse Bay and primary it's at the school. primary school. Primary school. You and Shane, Shane uh, top billing, the both of you, and it starts at two in the afternoon. It does. And it goes through to eight o'clock at night. And Gary's Indigo Blue is on yeah, there too. Yeah, Gary's Indigo he, Blue. He's on there too. So it's going to be a great afternoon. It's going to be great. Now, there is a rain day. If, yes, if, if it rains, it'll go to Sunday. Last day of daylight saving, I don't think it'll rain. No, it'll be a great afternoon. And it's been a while since I played in Blockhouse Bay. And, yeah. um, and I just hope everyone comes along with a nice picnic hamper and, you know, and um, sit back in the sun and enjoy some nice music. The rest of New Zealand. Give us some dates that you may be uh, visiting. Yeah, I'm doing a few gigs uh, over the next few months. Uh, I'm doing the Tauranga Blues and Jazz Fest at Easter, which, is a, wow. which is a big one mm. for me. Uh, I really enjoy doing that one. Uh, nothing in concrete. I am going to be playing at a place called Ohuanga. 
O Shane's always W H A N G O. Not sure yet when, but it's coming up. Yeah. So looking forward to that. I'm hoping to sort of step up a few more gigs around Auckland this year. Mm -hmm. Something I haven't done for two or three years. I pull back a wee bit and just sitting back and waiting and do, recording a new album last year. I did one. I'm doing another one right now. So I'm just going to keep at it. Mitch Marsden, fellow music traveller with this wonderful generation.